Good day everybody, welcome to another What's This Then? Um, today we're going to be looking at a little indie game that just sort of entered early access there called Sulphur. Because I played the demo for this one in the Steam Next Fest last year and had a really good time with uh, its shooting mechanics and stuff. Just sort of generally how it felt, the kind of vibe of the game. It seemed pretty good, so picked it up for the early access, been having a good time and thought I'd make a video on it. So... Like I said, yeah, name of the game, Sulphur. It's a roguelite FPS that has some extraction business going on, and I'll get a bit more into that once we get into the game itself. Um, the developers of this one is Perfect Random, I believe self-published as well. I had a look to see if they'd done any previous games, and I couldn't quite see anything, so I believe this might be one of their first games, at least as a collection of this studio, um, or indie development sort of group. Um, like I said, currently in early access, uh, 28th of October this came out, and I don't believe they have a set date or even time frame for the full release date yet, so they're probably just going to see how this early access goes first before making any commitments to that. Um, you can pick it up on Steam for about £20 or $25, and just to give some early access details, they have put out a bit of a roadmap, um, which includes stuff like new areas, new weapons, an endless mode, and the one that I was most interested in is multiplayer. So I think this game would be very interesting with a bit of multiplayer. And just to read you a bit of the premise, just from the Steam page, Sulphur is a modern, old-school action-adventure, outsmart enemies, find treasure, improve weapons, harness powers, delve deeper, find answers, make it to the end. Yeah, this is a pretty short and sweet little description. So let's hop into the settings real quick. Um, as of it being an early access game, obviously I'm not going to be too critical on the, on these, uh, on the settings menu because they're going to add stuff hopefully as time goes on. Although it's not terrible um, as of the way it is. It's got some important stuff in there like uh, FOV and stuff. But you can change your language, clear your save, gameplay, automatic weapon reload. This is off by default. You can also disable the crosshair if you wish. I kind of like the keeping the automatic weapon reload off. I don't know. I think it just adds something to this game like what it's trying to do. Weird, but, you know, if you play it, I think you'll sort of get what I mean by that. Um, you got some audio settings, you know, just general stuff here. Display, like I said, you've got your FOV slider, so that's always good to have in a first-person game. You've also got ultra-wide HUD padding. Um, I'm not entirely sure what this does. I'm not an ultra-wide gamer, but I'm sure ultra-wide uh, gamers will appreciate it nonetheless. Also lets you set your frame limit to pretty much... You know, all the, the good values there, and I think it'll always max out at whatever your monitor's refresh rate limit is, so that's always good to see. And you got your V-Sync, and then in controls, you've got your stuff here, you can rebind your keyboard uh, keyboard and gamepad. Um, like I've been saying in the past few videos, it's good to see gamepad getting rebindability, because that's usually something that they don't let you do. Maybe a few presets, but never full rebindability. And accessibility, you've got stuff like text screen uh, for the inventory, which is quite small on my monitor. Um, not small enough that I feel like the need to turn it up quite yet, but I could see me doing that down the line. Um, I think it's just, you know, a scaling thing with like 1440p, for example. And you can also dis uh, disable screen shake, but I don't think it's like too aggressive or anything. But uh, yeah, let's hop into it. And I'll sort of show you what this game's all about. So the kind of setup is that uh, you are a priest <clears throat> and your church had a very open doors, you know, anyone anyone can join our church or congregation or whatever. Um, a witch joined it and killed everyone and burned down the church except you. And you have chased the witch to a place called Sulphur, which is kind of like purgatory, a little, little place in between life and death. And the people who went to your church they act as your, like, hub um, sort of NPCs, which I think is pretty neat. Uh, like, this guy's, like, the grave digger. He, um, anytime you die, he will, like, resurrect you from this grave, which is pretty cool. Um, you got, like, this lady over here. She does the weapon upgrading, and also weapons have durability. Um, so she can uh, maintain those for you if you've got, like, a weapon you particularly like and want to keep using. Um, you've got... A uh, little sort of like donation box, so like the more... I believe this is going to be the more people you have in the church, the more money you get between runs. Um, I've already collected it, so right now it is empty. And you can actually head in here and you'll notice there's like black goo. Um, this is kind of what I imagine is going to be like a gated... Uh, 
sort of progression thing. Like the further I get in, the more of this is going to go in, the more the church is going to open up for more things for me to do. Because right now I've already found like a, an NPC sort of like down in the run um, that I can't seem to bring back yet. So I imagine I probably have to deal with some of this. Um, you've got a bit of a storage chest um, for some of your stuff um, that you can keep between runs. This is part of like the extraction elements I was saying about. So all of this stuff I found out on a run and had to bring back with me because if you die with it, it's gone. And we got this fella here. He's looking lovely. Um, but yeah, that's the sort of general hub area. I um, suppose I'll show you a little bit about the inventory. So it's pretty, pretty uh, run-of-the-mill inventory stuff here. You know, you got some armor slots, inventory slots. Uh, you can carry two weapons with you. You've got this uh, inventory for stuff you pick up. I have a snail in there and a mushroom. Um, so you've got three active items you can put. You can see them down the bottom left. And then you've got four like sort of trinket slots. And then you've got like all your ammos and your money and stuff like that. Anything you have on you when you die will be lost with the exception of this amulet, this pistol, which it will revert back to rank one if you die with it. And your father's shirt. That's the only things that no matter no matter what happens, you'll always come back with these three. And so send about your weapon will reset back to rank one. So you do level up a weapon as you keep using it. And um, I believe it just sort of gets better condition. Um, maybe like more damage and stuff like that. If if that does happen, I haven't really noticed it. Um, the damage anyway, at least on this pistol. Um, but you can also, you can see there are enchantment slots as well, so all weapons can have like two enchantment, two level one enchantments, or one level two enchantment. And to get a level two enchantment, you either buy it outright, or you uh, combine two level one enchantments, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Unless it's at like one of the, it might be one of the vendors, I just haven't taken like two scrolls yet to them, so that could be it. And then you can uh, add attachments uh, to your weapon as well. And there's also weapon oils. And oils, you can apply as many of those to your weapon as you want. Um, however, you can only have one of each type of oil. Uh, but oils can do different stuff like increase the durability of a weapon, but make it do maybe a slight less damage. Or it can have the uh, reverse effect, or it can make the bullets bigger, but um, they move slower, there's more drop on them, stuff like that. So there's quite a bit of customizability when it comes to the weapons, and it's not the sort of thing you would have expected, or at least I, it's the sort of thing I didn't expect whenever I looked at the sort of visual style for this game. Like, you know, you can be attaching like a suppressor, um, a 2x scope, a laser sight, a grip, a, a, a stock to this pistol, you know, like you can go crazy with like the gun customization. Which seems to be like a, an important part of this. But like I said, you die with that out on a run, and it's gone. And that's the sort of extraction element, because if you press T, you have an amulet. And it kind of talks to you, sort of lets you know what's going on. I don't really know the backstory to it yet, I haven't got that far. You just kind of have it and it talks to you. Um, it's how you extract. So you'll see um, it's black at the minute in the middle. You find these like shrines, and in those shrines is like this like essence. You absorb the essence with the amulet, and once you've done that, you can, uh, at any time during a run, press T, talk to it, and be like, I'm out of here. And then bring your stuff back and, you know, keep whatever you need to keep and all that sort of business. But yeah, but that, that'd, be the, that'd be the only part of it that I'm still a little bit mixed on. And it's not like a critical thing. It's not like it's a bad implementation of an extraction element or anything. I'm just not a big extraction guy when it comes to, like, you know, Tarkov and stuff like that. Um, it's just never something that's really stood out to me particularly well as being something like I really enjoy. But I'm giving this game a go because I really like its like style and stuff and I want to see I want to see if it uh, what it's got in store. But let's actually jump into uh, one of the runs. Um, I'm actually a little bit low on ammo. So let's take some money. We'll head over to the weapon vendor. Old stiff leg here. And these guys, like, sell infinite supplies of this sort of stuff. Like, so whenever you come back, at the very least, if you've got money, you can, uh, buy ammo. So we'll buy 100 rounds for our pistol here. Or, what was it? P38 Dirk. And we'll head into a run. What you do by hopping down here? And you can see the caves. I imagine, I haven't made it all the way through the caves yet. I've put about, uh, two to three hours into this one so far, so I haven't made it all the way through here yet. I'd imagine there's more areas uh, once you get through. Um, but yeah, this is it. 
a uh, sweet and simple little like sort of art style. I like it. I can dig it. Nice and clean. Um, you have a melee as well. You have like a katana, which is an interesting weapon choice. Um, I don't believe you get upgrades to your melee at all, or at least I haven't seen any. Uh, but let's have a look. So there's a tiny bit of destructibility in this game. Not a huge amount. There's also cooking. Oh, hello. Deal with you. Um, so the main emily, enemy down here in the caves is uh, goblins. As you can see. And they'll occasionally drop some stuff here. And you can also just like keep coming the bodies, interestingly. I think sometimes you can get like extra drops off them, maybe. Um, but yeah, you can definitely get some stuff out of random areas, such as like those. <laughs> Uh, what was that? Stalactites? Stalagmites? Whichever one. Uh, but yeah, so there's cooking in this game. Uh, now, it's very basic cooking. Um, for example, so what the, the one it teaches you in the sort of like tutorial run is that if you get a stick and three velvet bells, you can turn them into like a mushroom skewer and then they heal for like 15 instead of healing one. Um, there's also some goblins that just kind of like hide. Alright, and we got ourselves a nice little denim jacket, which does armor plus 3 and charisma plus 10. Now, I have no idea what charisma is used for. But uh, that might just be a fun little stat. I really like the music as well. It's not a choice I would have expected, but uh, I kind of dig it for the, the vibe it's got going, especially for like the little cave area. But yeah, it's pretty decent. Well, I just picked up that goblin's brain. Um, pretty decent variety of, like, enemies and stuff so far as well. Oh, hello. Didn't want to hear you. And sometimes the enemies will drop, like, healing items and stuff, so you can just go in here, right-click it, and there you go. There's some, like, there's ten health back over however many seconds that said, over ten seconds. And that was, like, sort of, like, the first one. Nice and simple, so you go down even further. Pretty usual sort of, like, uh, you know, roguelite level, uh, mission... Not mission, really run based system. That would be a run based system. Oh, we got a goblin with a bow, and he's also enchanted with some kind of buff. Occasionally you'll find special versions of enemies like him. I believe he's got poison on him. Oh, that's actually a new gun. But those enchanted ones are typically stronger. Arbiter 2. Okay, so this is a handheld triple barreled shotgun uh, by the looks of things. That's interesting, haven't seen that yet. So I'm still fairly early days when it comes to like seeing what weapons and stuff are in the game. So far I've mostly found uh, like handguns or SMGs. Um, I have found one like sort of 12 gauge pump action shotgun, which is pretty cool. Oh yeah, here's a cauldron. So you find these and you can do some cooking at them. Uh, I don't have a stick. Can I get a stick? Uh, I might be able to smash up the wood here. We got a stick? No, no stick. I think it's a specific types of wood you have to hit and you'll get that. Um, let's see if I can... So I would like to be able to show that to you, but... Might not be on the cards. Oh, here we go. Maybe this? No. Okay, it can be a little bit ambiguous as to what... Uh, as to what you can and cannot harvest, but it's one of those games where, like, you know, game doesn't really tell you a whole lot. Very much up to you to experiment. Um, or it, it could end up being uh, what people like to refer to as like a wiki game. Oh yeah, you're gone. That might have been a little bit of a waste, but sure, like we ain't got much anyway, so I might as well use it. Uh, let's have a broth. Why not? Get me up to full health. Um, but yeah, like I said, you got the mushrooms. You can just sort of walk up to them and... Oh, hello. Skeletons. So it is, it is very easy to die quickly in this. Um... If, if a big group of enemies were to catch you unaware and, like, sort of get up on you, they, they can kill you very fast, um, at least with, like, starting gear. I imagine, like, once you, as you get further into runs and stuff and you can start bringing, like, a lot more armor and stuff, that's a lot, it's a lot harder for that to happen. But at least in the early stages of the game, it can feel like the game can just kill you. Um, but honestly, it's because it kind of can. Uh, you're not very strong at the start. Especially with ammo. You will very likely run out of ammo during a run. Um, the first couple of times. Oh, here come a lot of boys, and one of them is very large. So this is what I mean. Like, sometimes uh, it'll just throw a rune at you like this, that just has an absolute fuckload of enemies. And if you don't have the ammo, well... 
Unlucky. This big guy's gonna eat up a lot of bullets. And then he's gonna... Split into like three smaller enemies. If I remember right. Hopefully I'll get some ammo back. It's risky to use your it's risky to use your melee because a lot of the time you will get hit doing it. Oh, there's an, an oil. Very nice. What does that do? I haven't seen that one yet. So damage goes up by 25%, but movement speed goes down by 15%. I see. Terminator oil, that's good. So that's not not a bad oil, especially for the shotgun. You know, if you're using the shotgun, you're probably already at close range. Oh my god, hello. There is a pack of goblins, and I have three bullets. I'm really starting to regret. Using my uh, shotgun, right? Thankfully, a lot of them were ranged guys, and once you get up close to them, it's, it can be a bit easier to sort of melee them down. But that's what I sort of mean about the importance of like bringing enough ammo. And I did just get 50 off that guy, so that was very fortunate because that would have been a run ender potentially. We also did get some butter, so I'm going to eat that. But yeah, this is like the general flow of the game. Um. Go into areas, kill enemies, manage your, manage your resources. Resource management's kind of a big one. Um, that's sort of part of the extraction element, is making sure you bring enough resources with you, but not enough that if you were to die, it would be a huge hindrance to you, you know, that sort of thing. Until you're sufficiently geared up and believe you could, you know, make it all the way, whatever that looks like. I imagine that's the sort of thing that they're going for. Uh, anything we got up here? So you gotta keep your eyes open for chests because they can be they can be in some funky locations sometimes. Oh, we got here the snut thirty eight. Let's put that on. What what type of ammo do you use? Ammo type nine mil. Not what I would have expected. What's the damage like? Ninety six. Okay, so it's a good bit more damage. That's uh, it's not bad actually. I like myself a little revolver. Yeah, I like the I like the music. Um, it was something that keeps like standing out to me, and I keep thinking like, damn, I just really did not expect this music, but I also I also really like it. Um, so there's also there's also no map, by the way. So if you get lost, unlucky, because uh, but you'll usually you'll usually be able to find your way out because there's not usually too many like branching locations or something like that. It's usually. Uh, at most, I think I've seen three ways out of an area, and they, oh, yellow hoodie. It's usually like to a dead end, you know, there's only one way that's an actual way to go. Armor, light and frost resistance, I didn't even know light is a thing that I have to worry about. Frost, I could imagine that. Um, but it's, yeah, procedural generation, so like, you know, I've never seen this exact room layout before, but I've seen ones like it, so that's the sort of style you're dealing with. One shots on the little goblins. I think there's like goblin dogs or something. I'm not really too sure. <laughs> Anyone else around here? No, it looks pretty good. Always be sure to open up barrels and stuff. Anything that can be broken, you should probably break it. Because you never know what you're going to find. Uh, healing items always being a big one. That's actual health potion. It's the first time I've seen one of those. That is a big heal. Most of the time it's just been like food that does like 5 over 3, 5 over 10. The most I've seen is like 15, like for like bread and stuff. Or actually, you know what? I found a spaghetti bolognese that does like 50. That was the most I'd seen. I thought that was going to be the, the pinnacle. Uh, oh, broken wall. No, I don't have anything to break that with. You need some kind of explosive, like you'll find a grenade. Um, so that, that could be something that, you know, if you find a bunch of grenades, you might want to bring that back with you. Or I believe the arms dealer actually sells a bunch of them. So you might want to stock up on a few grenades and stuff. Because you never know what you're going to find behind those. High heal. Okay. Movement speed minus 20%, charisma plus 5, extra jumps minus 100%, armor plus 1. What does that even... Extra jumps minus 100%. I'm assuming that would take away, if I were to get a double jump, this would remove that double jump. Interesting. So basically it just adds charisma and armor. Like I said, I have no idea what charisma is for. The first time I've even seen that stat is on this run with that denim jacket. Yeah, get some mystery meat. Don't have to think too hard about what that might be. 
you do have explosive barrels, and um, sometimes you gotta be very careful of those. The blast radius on them is a lot larger than you think. Oh, hello. I didn't even see you. So headshots and stuff like that do matter. So you always want to be aiming for them, because you want to be conserving ammo as much as possible. Let's blow you up with a barrel. Rather unfortunate. But yeah, you're kind of you're kind of seeing the gist of it. Um, obviously, I can't really show you anything. Oh, here's one of the NPCs. Sometimes they appear down in the uh, down in the caves and stuff. Um, quite handy, especially if you've been tearing through a weapon's durability. You sort of go here, drag your weapon in, repair. Um, that's actually free to repair for some reason. Um, maybe that's because it's my starting gun. Yes, yeah, that one costs fifty-seven. So that one, that one's pretty damaged. I'm not actually too sure what happens if a weapon uh, goes down all the way to zero condition. I don't know if it's going to be like near useless, but can still be used, or if it's you know can't use it anymore until it's repaired. I'm not hundred percent sure on that. Um, because weapons take quite a while to go down in durability, except for the ones that you find in a cave, you know, that are already sort of damaged. Gotta be careful of them archers, they'll get you. Yeah, enemy, enemy variety is not too bad for, um, what I imagine is still, like, kind of early game. Like, I do know that there is, like, other areas in the game already, um, with some new enemy types in it that I haven't seen yet. Some of them actually do bleed down into this, uh, caves area, and you sometimes see the goblins and them fighting each other. Which is, uh, interesting. The first time I saw that, that was, uh, pretty fun. Ow. Oh, we got another big boy. Let's see if we can lead him down here. It's quite, it's quite fun, the, like, 2D style on uh, the characters and stuff like that. Um, I, I feel like it works really well with, like, the art style and sort of general, uh, sort of vibe of the game. But then it's also very, like, you know, gruesome. You know, a lot of gore. Blood everywhere, like, literal body parts. You can see the, like, the, the skin. Like, you can see through them and stuff like that after you shoot them and stuff. So it's this interesting sort of juxtaposition between this very, like... Almost innocent looking art style, and then what you end up actually leaving it like. And I think it works really well. That sort of thing can come off very, like, weird, but I think it works here. And then especially you add on the, like, levels of, like, gun depth and stuff, like attachments and... Uh, this, like, it's, it's, it's hard to explain, but the game goes way harder into the guns. It, it's like a gun nut made this game, you know, but also had the idea for this, like, cool art style. Is kind of the best way I can kind of describe it. I think it all works together really well, and it's kind of what sort of drew me to this, just a very unique, very unique vibe for the game. But in terms of, uh, in terms of, like, progression in the game and stuff, uh, with it being, like, an extraction shooter, it really is just what you can bring back is essentially your progression. Um, because there's no real, as far as I can see, oh, there's a stick, can we do a bit of cooking? Uh, as far as I can see, there's no, like, leveling up or anything like that. Like, there's leveling up weapons and stuff, but there's no, like, you know, perk system or abilities or anything like that. It's just uh, what you find on runs and what you can keep with you and take back and all that sort of stuff. So you kind of, you're kind of your own progression depending on what you can, what you can find out here. And that, that can be a part of the thing about, like, why extraction stuff has never really done it for me. Um, because I've never, like, when I've played, like, Escape from Tarkov, I've never really found the idea of having to go out and get the stuff and bring it back, and then also reuse that stuff in the next, uh, run and stuff. Like, I've liked it in concept, but, um, just never really too, too, find it too, like, appealing in practice. Um, but this is a bit more of a lighthearted approach to that sort of stuff, so maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll dig this a bit more. Because I have been having a good time. The gunplay feels good, and, uh, the enemies feel fun to fight. The areas feel fun to explore, plenty to find. Hello. So I could buy some more ammo from this fella if I wanted to. Uh, he's actually selling uh, a couple of weapons now, but they're very expensive. Sulfur grenade, pineapple grenade, stick grenade, yeah, all sorts of stuff. There's like energy weapons as well, I see, because there's like, you know, energy cell uh, ammo and stuff. Also sells porridge and repair kits, yeah. I don't need anything from you right now. Um, let's see. Let's keep going until I find one of the shrines. I can show you that. 
I like how this one shots the smaller ones, that's good. That is like a, that is one of the better feelings of progression is whenever you do get a good weapon and you're genuinely like it's it's a it's a great feeling for the extraction shooters. It's one of the things they do very well. Um, you find a cool new weapon and you're like, wow, you know, like this thing is giving me a real sense of progression. It's doing way more damage. I'm liking using it, but then that thought is always in the back of your mind, like, I don't want to die with this thing. You know, it keeps things tense, and I do like that element for sure. So I think I should be at a shrine now. Once you get halfway through. It will usually give you a shrine. Oh, hello. What the? Like, I kind of teleported through the floor, but not really. Yeah, we got a stick grenade. Nice. For free? We got a beanie. Looks like a prop of the rapper beanie. Plus the armor? I'll take it. No downsides? Hell yeah. Mystery meat? Let me eat that. I'm also getting a decent whack of gold here, 104, so this, you know, if I do make it back with this, this will be a decent little haul. It's not the sort of game where, like, if you are the greatest gamer known to man, like, you just can't, you just almost certainly will not be able to make it through the first, er uh, the first run, you know? It, it, it ain't that kind of game. Okay, these guys are getting a little bit close. Uh, oh shit. Oh! Give him the jukes. Kind of easier to juke the big guys because they're a bit slower, but the smaller guys it can actually be quite hard to just run past. Unless you have a wide open space. Which obviously, you're in the caves. Which is not always something that you have access to. Nice, my pistol ranked up. So yeah, it seems to be doing about the same amount of damage, so it's probably just like durability and stuff like that that goes up. Um, there are boss fights, however, um, they're not like typical boss fights, you know, health bar appears and all that sort of stuff, but you will be sort of locked in an arena with like... So far for me, it was like a bigger enemy. No, oh, here's a little broken wall. We can use, the, use that grenade on. And I think there was a goblin behind it. So what do we, what do we get out of this? oil. Uh, spread, minus spread, minus move speed. So yeah, stuff usually has a downside associated with it, not just, not just all benefits. However, it does make it so whenever you find something that is just good for you in every conceivable way, then it does make that feeling even better. So yeah, if we chuck in three velvet bells, we can cook that, and now we have a mushroom skewer that heals for more. And the cooking is very sort of experimental. Reminds me of um, Breath of the Wild, but it's a bit more strict. It's not just chuck anything in and, you know, do the job. It will not let you cook just anything. However, I have just discovered that goblin flesh is cookable into a meat skewer. So there we go. There's the experimentation in action for you. So I don't know if there's any other ways to cook stuff. Like, I don't know if you'll be able to find just like a plate and then maybe you can cook like stews or something. But uh, so far it seems to be stick plus item equal some kind of some kind of food and um, so let's see oh here's another enemy type it's a big boy in what used to be probably a barrel that he got stuck in so them you have to shoot off their uh, armor before you can actually hurt them however they are quite easy to melee they're one of the few enemies that are quite easy to actually just run up on but they're usually supported by smaller enemies which makes them harder to melee because they generally will do this big slam. You just jump over it, hit a few melee swings, jump over it. And they usually die pretty quick once the armor's off. But uh, one of the bosses I fought was just like a huge version of him that then exploded into three medium sized versions of him um, in like a tiny room. So that, that was so far, that was the most of the boss fights. So not nothing too crazy there. Um, I would hope that the boss fights get a little bit more interesting. Get a bit of gold out of there. And we should be at the end of this floor, maybe any second. I actually probably after this room. I haven't found a chest in a little while, but I don't know if that's because I'm not looking hard enough or if I'm just not getting lucky with it. 
can be hard to hit these little guys sometimes. Ow, where'd you come from? I think you jumped from there. The only thing I will say is that because it has this very 2D cartoony art style, it can be kind of hard to tell where headshots begin and where headshots stop. Be quite a few times I've shot people what I think is going to be a headshot, and they've taken a few more shots to actually go down. Especially on these guys. Oh my god, he exploded into a dog. I've fallen in the water. Wait, can you not get in the water? Oh, you can. That is an aggressive dog. I was not expecting the goblin to explode into a dog, to be honest. That's a new one. Eat some food. And where are we looking in here? This is a big room. This is probably the biggest looking room I've seen yet. Oh yeah, this is definitely the biggest room I've seen yet. These caves kind of give me, like, Minecraft if it wasn't all squares kind of vibes. I will say, nothing, no procedural generation has ever quite hit as hard as Deep Rock Galactics. That's, all, that's all, always going to be a hard bar to, to clear. That's just genuinely fantastic stuff on that. Um, but yeah, here's the shrine. So you hit this. Hit this, please. You pull up your amulet, do a little hand sign. Absorb it, and you'll usually get sent to a strange place sometimes. So this is the old lady. She keeps saying about how she wants to leave this place and come back to my church. I have said yes to her like three times. And she still hasn't come back, so there's something I'm missing here. Yeah, Storm will be here in the in the, in the morrow. You want shelter? Return to my place. Please let me. Please let me in and spare me. So yeah, I've said the top one and the bottom one. She always says this pleases me, and then I get teleported here with what's going on. No idea. Fire everywhere. This door that's like won't open, and before I can do anything, I'm teleported out. So yeah, there's, uh, the game's got mysteries. The game's got stuff going on. I'm very straightforward with you. So plenty to f plenty to find out, plenty to figure out, which I quite like. Um, but yeah, so that's sort of the general run of the game, I suppose. So instead of going down another floor, I think I'll use this and go back and re uh, keep my newfound gains. And just like that, we're back here with all the stuff that I've acquired while I was out there. And then I can go put that in my chest. But yeah, that's uh, that's kind of basically it that I've seen so far. Um, I really quite dig it. Like I said, interesting art style, interesting vibe. The music is pretty funky for uh, the style of game that it is. I really wasn't expecting it, but I really like it. And the extraction elements, like I said, I'm not usually a big fan for them, but I'm having a good time with them here, but we'll see how long. We'll see how long that lasts for me. Um, just because usually I prefer, you know, roguelite type progression of uh, every run. You know, you get a little bit stronger type stuff. I usually do quite like that. Um, but I've been enjoying this. I'm interested to see what happens with, like, the witch and stuff. Like, what's that going to look like? What does this place look like when it's more expanded? What do the next areas look like? Like, all that's intriguing to me, you know? And that's usually usually a very good sign. Any donations? No, no donations. Doesn't happen every run. Just happens... Uh, Sometimes. But yeah, I'd say for the money, uh, 20, 20 pounds, $25, I would say this is pretty good. Um, considering, yeah, I find no bugs yet, apart from that one enemy that just sort of clipped through the ground a little bit. But given, like, the art style of the game, that sort of stuff usually doesn't bother me. And it doesn't cause any, like, gameplay issues, or at least that I've seen so far. So, game seems relatively well polished, especially for one that just went into early access. Um, I'm very interested by the idea of them adding, like, multiplayer and stuff like that. That sounds very interesting and very fun for this. And an endless mode? I'd be interested to see what that looks like. I mean, yeah, I think there's a lot to like here. So yeah, I'd, I'd probably say this one's probably worth your time. Especially if you've liked what you've seen here. But yeah, I think I'll call it there for that one. Thanks for watching, and I shall see you on the next one. Bye-bye.